Hi, this is PD at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and today I wanted to go over how I'm going to implement my day night uh, cycle. So I'm going to open up Photoshop just so I can doodle doodle and I'm just going to create a new picture make it a bit larger so we can actually see make sure I've got my pen selected okay so the way I want it to work is I know I'm going to have a terrain and of course your terrain is going to have hills and whatnot in it maybe some buildings trees uh, what I want to happen is I want my directional light which I'm going to use for my sun to rotate all the way around my terrain actually I probably won't have it rotate around the train because later on in the later tutorials uh, we're going to be dynamically loading and unloading trains so we're probably better off to set some sort of empty game object in the center of our world and have it rotate around that so to start with I'm going to want a starting location for my son and I'm just gonna start mine off you can start it off wherever you want but for me I'm gonna start it off you know right level with my my train and I'll have it pointing this way here so it's directional light will be shining directly across my plane and that means all my shadows will be very long in this direction and what I want to happen is I'm going to set a variable for how long my my day night cycle will be so one revolution is 24 hours in game but in real time I'm gonna I'll probably have to tweak it but I'll probably have you know say five minutes or something like that for a whole day night cycle and I'm go what I'm going to want to do is have it rotate around. So, you know, after, you know, like a minute there. And it's just going to keep moving around. Now, excuse my doodles. My son seems to have stolen my pen from my tablet. So I'm using the mouse. But anyway, as it rotates around, I'm going to want it to also rotate the direction it's pointing at. So that it's always pointing at this empty game object we're going to create. And another thing we're going to want to have is have it how intense this light is going to be. So when it's down here, it's going to be pretty low. So I'll have a, a minimum and a maximum for our light. So when it's down here, it's at a minimum. And when it gets to the top, it'll reach its maximum intensity. And then it just starts going back down again until it reaches here. And then it goes back to its minimum. And then, of course, once it passes this plane here, we'll just want to turn it off. And what we could do also is create a moon. So when our sun's over here, we could have our moon right here. And it's going to be going around as well. So once it reaches here, same thing, but obviously lower intensity light. And since I want this to be as modular as possible for further games and plus everyone else's game that they're using we should actually make these arrays so you can have more than one sun and more than one moon if you want and of course you can have it rotate on any axis you want or any combination of axis so the things that I'm looking at right now is I'm gonna need an empty game object right here I'm gonna need at least one directional light for the Sun as far as the the movement of the, the pattern is going to follow that should be fairly easy uh, we can just control the axis which axis it moves on or the combination of axis uh, we're going to want a timer to say how long our cycle lasts and we'll expose expose that in the editor so it's easily changeable I uh, will probably later on also want to add another array for having you know more than one moon if you wish and as far as getting it to rotate to look like to, to have it point in the right right direction for our light source uh, we should just be able to use a look at and have a look at this game object that we have centered and later on we can also start adding things like flares to our our Sun so it, you can actually see it moving through the sky but this should be a fairly easy system to implement for us for our as the light goes and it shouldn't be too much work for us 
Now we'll also want to take care of the skybox, having the skybox drift from day to night. And there's a couple ways we can do that. We can just have our one skybox and just uh, change how bright and dark it is. Or we can go ahead and use uh, two skyboxes and just have them blend from one to another. Now there is a, a skybox blend shader that's on the wiki. And I'm probably going to slaughter his name. He's one of the Unity devs. Uh, I believe it's Araz. Araz. I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce it. But he's written once. And from what I see, it looks like it's going to be exactly what we want. So we'll just use that. And we can blend our skyboxes. So that's what we're going to be working on this week. And I guess to get set up, uh, I'd recommend going out and getting a couple skyboxes. One for the day and one for the night. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.